everybody. Hope you're doing marvelously well. Yes, I am in the new studio build, which is in my kids' old bedroom. And you know what? We did a little bit of RGB on the lighting. What do you think? Does it make me look like a TikToker? I don't know. Anyway, um, it's kind of fun. We're going to try out the new Waves Harmonizer plugin. It's been out, I believe, a week or so. So I'm not, I'm not first to the punch here. I was on holiday, or as Americans like to say, vacation. I was vacating this area and going to another one. Therefore, I was on vacation. So let's get stuck into trying out the Waves Harmonizer plugin. Here is a track that um, I actually did a Waves plugin course with, and it's called Half a Heart. It's kind of a combination of um, organic drums, uh, electric guitars, synths, and all kinds of stuff. So give it a quick listen. Here is the lead vocal in the chorus without any harmonies whatsoever. All right, so it's a really simplistic chord sequence, but actually melody moves a lot. The chord sequence is, yeah, you guessed it. Six, four, one, five. Yeah, you never heard that before, have you? And the melody is. So even though it's not, um, there's no sharps or there's no flats, it does stay entirely in the key of F. You know, it, I suppose it's a minor feel. You know, it's it's definitely a minor feeling. So we could put it as D minor, or we could put it as F major. I'm sure it will read it either way. It never actually steps out of side of that key. But it does move quite a lot. There is, oh, that, that. Uh, so there's this kind of really fast moving melody at the end. So it's going to be interesting to see how it tracks. Now, for me, in a pop song like this, I'm usually doing things like a third up. I might sing an octave below, maybe an octave above, but it seems like it would be a little high. Let's try and open up the plugin, see how quickly we can create a third above, see if we can do a stereo, so one each on either side, so a third above here and a third above there. I mean, from what I've read about this plugin is it's going to be able to like create doubles because you can change the format of the vocal, so the tonality of the vocal. You can dial in the pitch ever so slightly, meaning you could make it a third above, but then detune it slightly. And then I could double it on the other side using the same vocal, but then change the format again. So maybe it's, I don't know, the, this voice slightly differently and then pitch it slightly sharp while the other one's slightly flat. And of course we could do an octave below, which is one of my favorite tricks for thickening up a vocal. So I'm going to put it directly on the channel. Now, obviously you could put it on its own subgroup, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea. But I know many, many of you will just, you know, if you're mixing in a box and working in a box, I'm probably going to put it straight on the channel. Normally, I put it on a separate auxiliary, subgroup, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so here's the unisons. Listen. I'm going to need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside. Be so you see, I can pan it around. Let's try the volume. I'm assuming up and down. I'm going to need someone to fix my half a heart. And stitch me up, up inside before I rip down, apart. Pan, oh, anywhere I'd be up. if I had you from the All right, that's pretty nifty, to be honest. That's straightforward. Now select the key. As we were saying, the chord sequence is in F major. The chord sequence is just. Once again, six, four, one, five. Never heard that chord sequence before, have you? No! No, no, no. We just have to let that one be. Let it be. 
six four one. All right, so we're going to change it to drop down menu, go to F. That's easy, F major, or you could go D minor. It doesn't matter. I mean, I suppose a purist would say that it's in D minor. You know, whatever. The melody is definitely ba da ba 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 ba. It's it's most of the melody is outlining a D minor chord the whole time. Um, ba da ba 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 ba. You know, well, I suppose that's an F major as well. So it's a D minor F major feel. I'm going with F major. All right. So there's the unison. You saw me move it around, pan it, all that kind of stuff. So let's add one. Okay. So it's defaulting to a minus five. So I presume it's an octave down and a fifth above. So I'm gonna need someone to it. fix my half a heart and mm -hmm. stitch me up inside. So it's an octave down, but a fifth above. So the main melody is. So this would be, so if you go down an octave, you're gonna obviously, but a fifth above, one, two, uh, three, four, five. There's your fifth, so the first note's gonna be A. And instead of, it's gonna be. So let's check it out, we're in solo. I'm gonna need someone to fix my heart for heart and stitch me up inside before I rip apart. It's pretty good. That sounds like the same melody. Sounds like a octave down fifth above. So let's put the two together. So I'm going to take that out of the solo. Now what I like about this is I can bring my unity up, my, my lead vocal up, put my fifth down a bit. Let's have a listen. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside. I will say though, octave down fifth above it is a little, it is a little ecclesiastical. It does sound like a Gorian chant. I mean, let's bring it down. So I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart. And I mean, it's not pure pop. A pure pop is going to be that third above, you know. So it's gonna be. That's gonna be what we want. So we've got that. So that, that's gonna be our harmony. So our lead vocal is boom. So I'll expect to hear a harmony. So you hear that higher part of it. So let's see what their next suggestion is going to be. So I'm gonna add one and it says <laughs> plus seven. That's gonna be interesting. I mean, I'll give it a listen. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up in. Pretty jazz. It's starting to get interesting. I wonder what the next one would be. Yeah. Okay, an octave down, second above. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart. These are cool ideas and definitely going to give you interesting um, harmonies and stuff. But obviously, you can just do what I'm about to do, which is click on that plus seven and go plus three. I'm gonna get rid of the minus two for the second. I see, hit this button here and get rid of it. Okay, so now with my plus three, that's my third above. Let's listen to it. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart. Let's solo it and make sure it's the melody that we know it should be. A third above. Um, as we said, the lead vocal is. So the harmony will be. Check it out. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart. And there it is. So it's correctly tracking. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside before I rip apart. So there you go. So it's tracking fine. Okay. Now that might be good enough to just have a lead vocal with a third above. That might be all you need. But I want this chorus vocal to be a pop chorus vocal. So I'm going to end up putting it over here on the left. Let's take it out of solo. I'm gonna need Someone to fix my half a heart. I'm gonna bring that octave down fifth above really quiet. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart. Snuggle it in a little bit closer, put it in about, you know, 40, 50% pan to the left. I don't wanna go full left and right. Maybe do that. 
later. So anyway, now I'm going to put another one in here and I'm going to do the same thing, plus three. And if I just take that and pan it over the other side, then probably the width will disappear because I haven't changed any of the characteristics about this third. I'm gonna need someone to fix Yeah, it just sounds like a third above loud now because they're exactly the same tracking. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside. So let's go to this one here, let's solo it. And let's mess around with it a bit. So this is now the one that's panned about 50% to the right, the third above. So let's tr mess with the format. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside before... Even that one click really does change it quite dramatically. I'm gonna need someone to... F okay, it's starting to sound a little artificial when you go up like that, but quite good. And I'm also going to detune it. So I've detuned it at like minus five here. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a And why don't now we'll go to the other one and solo that. So now we're going to the other third above. And why don't we do the opposite? Let's bring the format down. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside. So I brought the format down so it's just a little thicker sounding. So now take it out of solo, and now I have two thirds, one that's pitched slightly sharp, one that's pitched slightly flat, one that has a little thinner sounding vocal, and one that has a little thicker sounding. So we should get now some width. We should have some like 40, 50% on the left and right, third above. Fingers crossed. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside before I rip apart. I wonder where I'd be if I... Sounds like a pop vocal. Let's bring up the lead a little bit more. Let's bring down these a little bit. Let's drop it into the chorus. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside before I I'm going to put some, you know what, before I put some effects on it, let's have some fun with delays and uh, feedback. The other thing I like about this is I've got a filter here, so if I want to wipe off some of the top, I can. But I don't know if I need to do that at the moment, but let's. I'm going to need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside before I rip apart. Oh, I see what I've got to do. So I'm actually going to select one here. Let's go into solo to check it out. I'm gonna need someone to f fix my half a heart and stitch me up in. We we'll have to hear that in context. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart. And Actually, that little delay is starting to make it feel a little bit more natural because it's not identically timed with the lead anymore. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside. So super short delay. It's nice. Oh look, and the pan control here is, it, it, oh, it's adjustable here, and level's adjustable here. If you don't want to use that control, nice. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up. And I've got, I'm gonna need, so I can go crazy. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me. This is good. I like this. So let's get a little bit of delay on the left hand one. A little bit of feedback. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up. I like this. Okay, let's add some of our effects in. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside before I rip apart. So that's some reverb and delays that I had on the original mix. Okay, so I'm going to take off the Waves Harmony and let's listen to it without the effect on that we just created. Okay, so obviously it's going to be louder now with the harmonies, but you know, that's what happens when you add harmonies. Now, as I said before, I've built harmonies like this many, many times in pop productions, 
and I've used Melodyne and I've used Autotune. Both of them work great for doing it. The thing is, obviously, like you saw, I can pick up the melody and I can go. Not everybody who's an engineer or even a, you know, a producer up and coming has the ability to be able to go. So then, um, do this. I know where the harmony is. Many of you are probably, or possibly, you know, starting out, and you want to be able to add plus three, or add harmony, or get suggestions from the plugins. So this is good. When I'm working in Melodyne or um, Autotune, what I have to do is I, I draw in the notes. So you take a melody in there, and then you raise it a third. Again, you still have to have a, at least a smattering of theory to know that a third above an F in F major is going to be A, and that a fifth is going to be C. So that isn't for everybody. Not everybody's gonna know that. You're gonna learn by doing it, and it's fantastic. Anything that automates is good when you're up and coming. Um, actually, it was good for me. I This was far quicker. If you take off all the waffling and me showing you what the notes I want to hear and making sure that it generated them, um, it's a couple of seconds you know, to do this. All right, let's keep going. I'm gonna add, now it's suggesting a fourth. I don't think that's gonna work for me, but let's have a listen. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside before I... I don't wanna hear a fourth on the vocals, but it's suggesting it. Let's get rid of that one. Oh, an octave down and ninth. So it's an octave down and a second above. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and Nice. I don't know if I'm going to end up using that, but hey, uh, maybe blend it in low. I'm going to need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside before I rip apart. Oh, I knew where I'd be if I had you from the start. I really need someone. All that I left was half a heart. Will I make it with half a heart? It's, it's crazy when it goes down, the, the format changing and everything just, it, it feels like a, a guy singing along with her, like an R&B singer. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside before I rip apart. It's interesting with those random kind of, you know, ninths and, and it had a fourth, which I, I didn't really dig, but having a fourth and a ninth Hmm. Like in there, blended really super low gives a thickness to the vocals. I mean, I'm always going to go third and fifths. Let's see what else it's suggesting. Oh, octave above. Interesting. Um, maybe an octave above quiet. Still more possibilities to add. An octave down. Now, I actually love this on, on high vocals, whether it be a girl with a high vocal or a guy with a high vocal. That tracks really nicely. In the track, it sounds pretty fantastic. Let's see what it sounds like soloed. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside. Wow, it sounds like a, a guy R&B voice, but blend it in, it could be really special. Let's take the track out of solo. This is an individual voice out of solo. Drop it down just a bit. I'm gonna need someone to fix my half a heart and stitch me up inside before I rip apart. Oh, I know where I'd be if I had you from the start. Turn all the harmonies off. For those of you that are, um, can't hear the difference, I'm actually going to bring the lead vocal up. So the lead vocal will match the volume of what it would be like hearing all those harmonies. So here's that up.
Okay, cool. Now let's listen with all the harmonies in at a fairly comparable volume. I haven't gone to the LFO section here and messed with it. It looks like you've got loads of variations of what you can do here. Loads and loads and loads. Um, oh, wow, you've got ADSR, two variations, amplitude controls, pitch controls. Woo! It says spread out, it says drag onto controls to assign modulation. There is a lot you could do here. But like always with plugin demos that I do, I like the open it up, see if I can make it work, see if it can sound good really quickly, then I'm going to be happy. I don't want to personally open up a plugin and spend an hour trying to figure out something that's usable. This so far has worked really well with my brain, um, and I don't consider myself a genius, so I'm sure you are going to be able to make it work as quickly as I did. We are lucky though, but we have a couple of other wonderful people here who are going to help demonstrate it. Of course, one of those would be Mr. Matt Lang coming up next. And then of course, after Matt Lang, the wonderful Adam Reaper. What is great about it is Matt Lang is working in a dance music situation, remixing as well as producing tracks in that genre. And of course, our good friend, Adam Steele, who works in a different DAW, Reaper. So for us, it's really important to give different perspectives, different people working on different genres of music and using different DAWs. So let's go over to Mr. Matt Lang. Hey folks, Matt Lang here. I'm checking out Waves Harmony, which is the brand new harmonizer by Waves. Shocking, I know it's in the name, but it's cool, it's fun, it's creative, and I'm liking it a lot. I've always been a big fan of harmonizers, really far more than vocoders or anything else like that, ever since I first heard Imogen Heap's Hide and Seek, which is just an iconic track. And as far as I know, I believe that was done on an old Digitech vocalist, which you could send MIDI to and it would spit out the harmonies. So I just did exactly the same thing. And using Waves Harmony, I placed this actually on a send. I could have placed it on my actual lead track itself, but I decided I wanted to put it on a send so I could have individual control over the harmony versus the source, which would have been uh, my vocal lead. So this is what it sounds like, and this is also what harmony looks like. So check this out. With every broken bond we mend, your phantom shimmers once again. After the hard disillusion, I'll be here for you. Really cool, right? Without the harmony, or harmonizer and the harmony, you really call it both, it's a lot more boring. With every broken bond we mend, your phantom shimmers once again. It's fine, but the harmony really adds a ton of harmonic complexity to it and it's a lot more interesting. So the way I set that up is I have my vocal lead that is being sent to a harmonizer aux track, and on the aux track, I have my waves harmony. And then I created a MIDI channel right here in Pro Tools. I called it Harm MIDI, and I'm routing the output to channel one of harmonizer aux, waves harmony one. So now, if I play notes, for instance, you'll see waves, the harmony, that's me on my keyboard. It'll automatically spread that across the spectrum and it will just basically play the input of the notes I'm sending, which allows me a lot of creative opportunities and I love creative opportunities. Those are fun. So um, the way it's also spreading some of that stuff out, uh, for instance, the spreader, it's going to take you know my area of notes and automatically you can see kind of uh, the structure in which it does. And I guess you could spread it even further or keep it tighter, but it's quite effective. So you can really get some nice big stereo field. And I have the trigger set to be poly, but it could be every time you play a new note, it would put it somewhere else. I like poly. So anyway, that's a cat screaming in the background because he wants to be harmonized too. This is one way to use harmony. 
And uh, this is usually the way I have used harmony uh, or harmonizers, I should say, in previous work, especially if I've been working on a pop record to do uh, really like the image and heap kind of thing or just to create a fake harmony. But Waves Harmony has some other tricks up its sleeve that I have not seen in other harmonizers. And this is where it starts to get really creative and really fun. So if we take at a look at this other example, I'm just going to play it for you and then I'll talk about what it's doing. It sounds like a mess of notes, and that's because it basically is. So let's take a, well first, I want a better loop here. And what's really cool about this is you can input all these individual notes, but what I'm doing, I'm using the flatten function, which is going to flatten the incoming pitch to whatever note I want it to be. So all of these individual notes, C3, D2, A3, D1, etc., A2, those are all being flattened only to those pitches. So none of the harmonies are actually following the pitch of the input at all. If I want to bring in the input, I can with the source knob right here. So there it is. But what's making it sound also so cloudy, and that's really a really cool part of that, is every individual harmony also has a delay line. And that delay line can have feedback, or it doesn't have to have feedback, and there's formant shifting. So I am delaying certain harmonies, which is going to spread them out. For instance, this one, the D2, that's being, uh, it's a dotted quarter note. Every dotted quarter, you'll get the D2, or the D2 is, I should say, a dotted quarter behind everything else. If we take a look at a different one, what's E4? E4 is a full bar behind the rest of it, but the rate is being modulated by this LFO here, and this LFO is synced to a rate of two bars. So this is where it gets fun and wacky because I have LFOs as well as a sequencer, and then I could do it with uh, ADSRs as well as amplitude modulation and pitch. and and of course the spreader as we saw before. But these right in here, like M1 through 4, this is where it gets really fun for me. Because you see these bouncing balls happening, and that is because I have three different LFOs at different rates, all modulating the panning of three individual hits. So you can see that they're never synced up perfectly at all. They're always going in and out of phase, at least LFO phase, with each other. And that allows for a really cool spreading effect. But on top of it, I'm also doing formant shifting on a lot of these things, and that is available by the formant knob right here. So for instance, uh, C3 is not shifted, D2 is shifted up by six formants. And you could look the same over here, E4 is shifted down, and E4 is being panned, that's one of the many that's being panned. So you can see this gets very complex very quickly. The LFOs have preset shapes, but you can do all sorts of uh, like funny ways to modulate the LFOs, like the warping, you're going to see the way, like, check out how the speed of that changes. It's almost basically doing, like, a decrescendo of tempo that's going to stay synced to the tempo of the LFO with warp. So that's very cool, and you can change the phase, blah, blah, blah. If you have something that is not a sine wave, you could use smooth to uh, kind of soothe out the ends of how, uh, how rough that LFO is, and then what's really cool, I'm going to, I really like this one. Where is it? It's nice and low. Oh, right, because it's here. So I have this low note and I can solo this low note. And I am using the sequencer to modulate the formats. Take off the effects. You felt a whole tumor as once again. That's so cool. Tumor as once again. You felt a whole tumor as once again. 
So let's add it all back together. So as you can see, it gets really creative really quick. And this to me is the most creative part of Waves Harmony. I mean, obviously it can harmonize and that's great. That's not the first thing to be able to do that. However, once you add in all this modulation as well as the way it spreads things out and the fact that you can have, God, more taps than you need. Uh, I haven't even tried to see how many I could have. I guess I have eight right now. Oh, I maxed it out so you can have eight but that's quite a lot. And then there are snapshots, of course, which uh, I'm sure Warren has covered or someone else where it'll show, you can have different you know, settings on the same harmonizer for different sections of a song. There's a lot of forward thinking stuff in here and this really is the next generation version of a harmonizer. But my favorite stuff is of course the modulation because it allows you to get really weird. So if you're into harmonizers, you really should check out Waves Harmony. It's, uh, it's really the next step forward. It sounds great and it's a hell of a lot of fun. So all the processing I've done on the vocals for my track has all been Waves plugins really focusing on the new Harmony plugin. So it sounds a bit like this. It's not my usual rock thing. It's a little different. If I could just see you, So it, it, it's very, very different from what I usually do, but I decided to explore some uh, particularly bonkers stuff. So the main vocal here starts off um, with the automation on bypass, so we can just hear a clear vocal. Flowing through the skyline, I'm faithless. Which, of course, the, the tuning was a little off, so I've used Waves Tune LT. Uh, compressed it with the good old CLA-76. Then Harmony comes in, and then there is a tad compression from the LA-2A and a little bit of sweetening from the Puig Tech. But when Harmony comes in, this is where it gets interesting because it kicks in and it's got lots going on. Owing to the byline, I'm worthless. First thing I'm going to do is, well, you can see this is 200%, so you can see this nice and big on the screen. Thought I'd check that out, because that's a new uh, version 14 Waves thing, is that you can now natively scale everything, which is nice and useful. And so let's start at the top here with the source, because correct natural is doing what it says, that the main vocal, if it was slightly out, then it's pulling it in. You can turn that to hard mode, kind of T-Pain style. You can MIDI it so it becomes very much on point, or there's no fix mode. And then we get into the harmony stuff. And oh boy, what have I done here? Everything possible. <laughs> so I can solo these, but if we look at this row here, each one of these is a note that's being added in. And let's start with the third, because each one, when you click on them, it gives you a whole set of options. I'm going to hit S for solo. Now, this is over here on the right. This is a big visual kind of representation, of course, of everything that we have. If I hit play on that, it's set at the top to D minor. So that should keep the third to be in a relative kind of way. Owing to the byline, I'm worthless. And so then I've got a, a lower octave, which I have messed with the form, and so that sounds a bit like kind of when Lord would have that kind of super low octave thing that sounds a bit. <laughs> the formant does that. Owing to the byline, I'm worthless. And I've got a top octave here as well. It's slightly louder. Owing to the... That's on a delay. That's 30 seconds of a note later uh, because it's set with a tempo. So it's slightly out from everything else on purpose to make this sound like a bigger group of vocals. 
And then Panda have got a lower, um, what is a, a fourth, but it's five semitones, so it's minus five. I've got a perfect fifth up, which is seven. And so if they're not soloed, we suddenly hear everything in. Owing to the bylaw. Just to make this an interesting cluster chord, I've selected one of the notes and just soloed it and hit flat. So it stays on A, which is the fifth um, of the, the, the root of the key. But no matter where the main vocal goes, this will hold that note. Owing to the byline, I'm worthless. Which creates what we call a pedal. And that, for me, is a, a cool kind of feature that that helps keep it in place. And there are really cool things that you can do, which there's a, there's a notes thing with. There is generate notes, which is not on right now for this vocal, but is on on vocal two. Vocal two is kind of the response to the call. And this is where it gets really interesting. You can see things moving around. Like, um, so I've got a D3 on this one. So I've got the root as a pedal. And you can see that the level on this is going up and down and up and down. There are different modifiers at the bottom here. If I just click one, you can see what they are. And like there's amplitude and pitch. So I've got the, the, the sine wave here and I've just dropped that onto the level for this root D3. And you can see it constantly getting louder, quieter, louder. And that just helps it to give some movement. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. This one does also have the notes engaged because I've got generate notes on. See, when I hit play, there's that blue thing moving around. That's the pan modulated on the triangle wave M2 that's been dropped. I can't just say no. And one thing I've done that's really cool is there's a global spread up here, which you can see I've got everything fairly wide panned, but that's set pan and this is modulated so the pitch of the original vocal whenever that gets um interpreted gives us a bit of an up down weight and the higher it goes it's set so that the the spread control pushes so it becomes more wide on the higher notes which is awesome because that means that i can have Say a background vocal that starts low, starts in the middle, goes up and spreads, or the opposite. So thanks ever so much for watching that. I hope between all of us, you learn the feature set of the plugin and you get to make up your mind. There's one thing I will say about Waves plugins when they come out. If, they, if there's something that you love and that spikes your interest, it's always pretty darn cheap. And if we're still in the introductory period, I believe it's 39 whopping dollars. So for a, a harmony generator like this with the functions that I liked and use, I think it's a pretty darn good price. I could set up this vocal to sound this way in about two or three minutes. I could save that as a preset and um, Bob's your uncle. If I was to build it using other things that I traditionally did, it would take me a little bit longer. But I do like, I like this. Seems pretty straightforward and easy. And if this is new to you, remember you don't have to go full blown, super loud harmonies as I did. You could build harmonies and then put them really, really quiet just to get the vocal to sound thicker. All those different tricks we did with the format, adjusting the sound of the vocal, you could just bring a third, a fifth, an octave down, all this kind of stuff, and then just put it down here, super quiet, so that you don't really hear the harmonies as such, but you hear a much bigger, expansive vocal. So for 40 bucks, it might just be a good vocal thickening tool for many of you. It's an interesting concept. Thanks ever so much for watching. So long, farewell, a video saying, au revoir, adios, goodbye.